This week on Silver Screen, we take a look at the rebirth in school suspensions, Friday night lights, and the administration's expectations for the year. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, August 28th, and your Silver Screen report starts now. So her spotlight attention no longer exists. Yeah, after a long absence, in-school suspension is returning to campus. Here's Sarah Emily Risch with more details. For the first time in more than a dozen years, in-school suspension is back on campus. I think it's better because some people have stuff to do after school, like no matter what type of consequences they have to serve. So ISS is like, it's better and worse because you're still missing classes and stuff. People have social lives to live after twilight detention, so one way that would be effective is depriving them of that privilege, hence motivating them to avoid whatever misconduct they had caused to get them get there again. As a punishment for a Category 3 offense, ISS will be held during normal school hours. The in-school suspension is a suspension in which the students will come here. Uh, they will report to Mr. McGee's room, which is downstairs by ROTC by 820, and they will be there until the bell rings for them to be dismissed at 340. There are mixed opinions about whether ISS will be more effective than Twilight's. Over the summer, uh, we looked at the different data uh, with regards to Twilight suspensions uh, or Twilight detentions, uh, failure to serve suspensions resulting from somebody not coming to Twilight and also just the program overall. And we felt that in school was a better opportunity to get students here so that they didn't risk uh, a day of out of school. We also looked at it, it was a time we could get them here and hopefully uh, use a negative, which was getting the detention or the in-school suspension and turn it into a positive by helping them get some work done. If you know your education is important, then it's hard to miss your classes during school, so you won't want to do anything bad to miss your classes again. Um, if it makes it better by getting people to do the right thing, then it's a good thing. This has been Sarah Emily Risch with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students if they would rather serve a toilet detention or in-school suspension. the twilight because it's not as long so it wouldn't take up the whole day it'd just be a couple of hours. I'd rather have ISS because I have stuff to do after school and I'd rather sit and do nothing all day. I would rather have an ISS because it doesn't require coming back or staying like I think I have like a twilight because I'm not trying to stay at the school all day I'd rather just like come here after school and then just like get all that stuff done and you know like chill and stuff. The SAT word of the week is mandate, a noun meaning an authoritative command. One of Dutch Fork's familiar faces is in the new office. Tyler Wallace investigates. Filling the shoes of former assistant principal Sarah Longshore, Tamara Turner finds herself in a new position. In a new position, my primary role is to support students and teachers with instruction in the classroom. So a lot of what I do will entail going out to classrooms, making observations of instruction. Behind the scenes, I work a lot with um, creating a master schedule. Turner has new responsibilities that she did not have in former years. I love my old position. I love my new position. I love the position before that when I was a teacher. I love everything about education. The difference is that with this position, I deal more with teachers and classrooms. In my last position, I dealt more with students because I was assigned S through Z for discipline. Um, so it's just a little different because now I have to find a different way to connect with my kids. Ms. Turner is very passionate about helping all children, not just one group here or one group there, but she really looks to see and everything that she does, how it's going to impact students and how it's going to best impact students. Turner is excited to see what the future holds. 
Um, I am very excited about Mrs. Turner being in Mrs. Longshore's position as Assistant Principal for Instruction. Um, I previously have had um, a working relationship with Mrs. Turner, being that she was a member of the Science Department at one time, and she was our STEM coordinator here at Dutch Fork High School. I didn't feel nervous, I felt excited, um, because it's, it's rewarding to set a goal for yourself and actually see that goal come to be. So it was more excitement than it was nervousness. This has been China Wallace with your Silver Screen Report. We had an unusually large number of Silver Screen seniors last year, so there's a lot of new blood on this year's staff. This week, we sent two of our newest staffers to investigate this year's new courses. Here's Adam Amick with the story. Conducting new experiments to innovative ways of studying algebra, new classes have been added to Dutch Fork's curriculum this year. These classes are beneficial to students in that it helps to prepare them overall for completing the science requirements that they're interested in, gives them lab sciences. Every student that goes through high school has to have uh, physical science and three lab sciences. And the classes that we've, we're offering now in environmental, marine science, and in chemistry too, all meet those uh, requirements for college admission. One new class is designed for students who have completed Algebra 1, Part 1. The last class that's new to us this year is Foundations of Algebra. Um, previously, we had taught a class called Algebra 1, Part 1. Teacher Meredith Mills said Foundations of Algebra does differ from Algebra 1, Part 1. Covering most of the content you'll see in Algebra 1 CP, although it doesn't have an EOC exam at the end of the year. Science courses make up a large portion of the new classes offered to students this year. Three of them are in the science department. Um, one of them is Chemistry 2, and it is a follow-up to Chemistry 1, doing more experiments, inquiry, and preparing you for a college-level chemistry class. In Chemistry 2, we're going to be applying the skills from Chemistry 1 to carbon-based chemistry. Chemistry 2 differs from Chemistry 1 in that the second level is for students who want to pursue a career in medicine. It's definitely a class that if you're interested in the medical field, veterinary medicine, medicine nursing, physical therapy, anything like that, um, you want to have a little bit of experience in. This has been Adam Amick with your Silver Screen Report. Hey Malik, are you excited for football season? Yeah, Trey Martin has a story on how the players and students are excited as well. <laughs> Cheers shook the stadium as Dutch Fork took on the Greenwood Eagles last Friday. I think it's definitely one of the most important times of the year because it's when, you know, it's the first, like, sporting events that we go to almost. And it's like where we kind of gel as a student body, where we, you know, come together a little more. We have a lot of fun. Student section for the first time made, being, uh, made the football game better and made a lot more, like, camaraderie before between like our classmates and our the whole school. To be out there in front of everyone and you know leading the chance, picking up the guys on the field because someone has to lead it, someone has to give it direction and I'm you know, willing to do that. My favorite part of the football game on Friday was when Sean Reem got down and did the roller coaster with everybody in the stands following his motions. Despite the result of the game, the team has one goal in mind. All in all, win a state championship, of course, and honestly, I don't see anything less than that. Win state, it's the goal every year. You want to be the best in the state that you can be, so plan to achieve it like we do every year. Just practice, film, and just grind until we can get there. We've been practicing basically every single day. We watch film on all the teams. Uh, we look at our mistakes and just see what we can do to get better and better each day. The team looks to get back on track tonight at home against Goose Creek. I'm looking most forward to Goose Creek because we haven't really beaten them yet and I really think we have a good chance this year. I'm feeling it's going to be a big game and that um, well, a lot of people are going to show up. We're going to try and do some stuff with the pep club, you know, get some like uh, extra items to make it fun, make it cool and we're going to be loud. This has been Trey Martin with your Silver Screen Report. It's that time of year again, Maddie. Time for the annual admin video. It sure is, Malik, so listen up, y'all. Here are the administrators explaining their expectations for this year. Students need to make sure that they're actually attending school every day. I would advise that, especially at the high school level, students think about using an agenda book to keep up with assignments so that they're not overwhelmed. If at any time a student has concern about their grades or instruction, their first step should always be to approach their teachers and talk to them about their concerns, talk to them about why they're struggling or how they need help. If a student needs extra help in a classroom, all teachers offer extra time through academic assistance. So 
So it's very important for, for students to let their teacher know if they need help and that way they can show up to the teacher's academic assistance time. We also have an ALEC Center here at school. ALEC is located on the first floor, which is the 100th floor, down near Study Hall. Students should be prepared to take advantage of ALEC as an opportunity to make up missed tests or make up missed work, so they can talk to their teachers about doing that as well. If you're found to be out of area, that means being where you're not supposed to be, a designated, designated area that you're supposed to be in, you'll receive a Saturday detention or a three-hour detention. So for example, if you're supposed to be using the restroom and we find you in the gym, that means you're out of area. So always be where you're supposed to be. If you have a, have a purple pass or one of those pink passes, make sure you're going to where that pass says you're supposed to go. There is no need or no reason for any student to be in the student parking lot at any time unless authorized by the administrator or by the front office. If you have to go to your car for any reason, make sure you sign out through the main office to do so. There is no leaving campus at any point in time. The only time you can leave campus is if you're going to the Kate Center or returning from the Kate Center or if you got permission from your parents to leave and it's been cleared by an administrator. At no point in time should you go to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, anything like that. So always make sure that you are where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Make sure you're dressed appropriately at all times. The biggest issue is usually headgear. So make sure there's no headgear on whatsoever. No hats, no scarves, no bandanas should be worn on your head. Uh, pants should be worn at the appropriate length on your waist. Uh, make sure females you're dressed appropriately. The biggest thing is that it does not disrupt the learning environment. So make sure you're dressed appropriately at all times. If you have anything that you value, make sure you put it in a secure location or you keep your eye on it all the time. If you truly value things that you don't necessarily need to have at school, leave it home. PBIS is a great uh, system, award system we have here at our school. Uh, the students being respectful, reputable, responsible. Uh, they can get issued classic cash from a teacher. If you get that, uh, issued a classic cash, you may redeem that at our eye care center at the end of the comments. You can get all types of uh, PBIS swag. Before you put any flyers up in the school, make sure that you contact me or the teacher of your club or sponsor of your club, contact me so we make sure that what you're putting up is appropriate. We expect you to be here. Uh, the state of South Carolina has a requirement on seat time, so that means if you miss more than a certain amount of days, you will not receive credit for the course no matter what grade you earn. Uh, for year-long classes, that's five absences. For semester classes, that's three absences. So make sure you're here. If you are absent, make sure you get your notes turned in as quickly as possible to the attendance office. Uh, those of you who have scheduled senior study halls, congratulations, uh, you've earned it. If you have a senior study hall, you cannot be on campus. Uh, you can come you know, five minutes before the bell rings and wait in the commons to go to class, but you cannot just wander the halls. Likewise, if you have one at the end of the day, you must leave quickly after the bell rings. You cannot just hang around. If for some reason we catch you hanging around school when you're not supposed to, you will be moved from your senior study hall to a regular study hall and you'll be required to be here. So make sure you're where you're supposed to be. Student aides are a great resource to Dutch Fork. Uh, we appreciate all the work that student aides put in. Uh, teachers and staff members can have one student aide per block. If you'd like to be a student aide, you need to pick up a form from your study hall teacher and then get that signed by your parent, yourself, and your administrator and turn that into Ms. Campbell. You'll be responsible for tracking your attendance and turning that into the attendance office each week. Students who either have discipline issues or start having attendance issues or fail to turn in their attendance sheet will not be able to continue being student aides. At Dutch Fork we all wear IDs. Students are expected to wear their ID at all times when they're in the building. Uh, you just display it on your neck. Uh, if you don't want to wear a lanyard, you can clip it to your shirt, but it needs to be above the waist in a place that the administrators and teachers can see. You can order a temporary ID in your first block 
uh, by just telling your teacher you need one, they'll email attendance and it'll get delivered to you. Otherwise, they can be picked up in the book room. If you order a temporary after first block, you'll not only be charged for the ID, but you will have a two-hour detention. Likewise, if we see you in the building not wearing your ID, you'll get a two-hour detention. So just make sure they're properly displayed around your neck. Having it in your pocket doesn't count. You should have textbooks in most of your classes. If you don't and the teacher is not assigning textbooks, that's fine. We expect you to keep track of any textbook you are issued. Those will be turned in at the end of the year. If they've been damaged or you lose them, you're responsible for paying for them. So make sure you keep track of them. Don't give them to other people. Don't uh, take other people's textbooks. You need to hold on to them yourself to make sure that you can turn them in at the right time. If you have any textbook concerns, you can see me or you can go to the book room and see Ms. Kessinger. Do not go through the cafeteria during any lunch that is not your own. You are assigned one lunch. You should be there during that lunch. If you get a pass from a teacher to go to the media center, go directly to the media center. Do not go through the cafeteria. If you get a pass to, from a teacher to go to the front office, avoid the cafeteria. We expect you to only attend your lunch. So make sure y'all guys are helping us out at lunchtime. Make sure that you're uh, cleaning up after yourselves. Um, take your trash, put your trash in the trash can. Also, if you see someone that's you know, littering in the hallways, anything like that, helps out, clean up. We're gonna make sure the custodial staff this year is making a hard push to keep the building nice and clean for us. And so we need y'all guys to help us out on that. If you need to put up any type of poster, right? Posters will need to be hung this year on a cork strip or on a bulletin board. So do not go taping anything to the walls. Um, we're trying to make sure that we keep our walls nice and clean and we don't want to sit there and take anything and tape it to the walls, all right? So anything that needs to be hung up, we need to put it on a cork strip or we need to sit there and actually put it onto a bulletin board. Any major disruptions, guys, if you get in a fight or anything like that here at the school, realize we're going to take you up for expulsion, all right? So keep your hands to yourself, all right? Your mom, your dad, they raised you right, you know how to act. Make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to cause a major disruption to the school and in interrupt the learning environment. All students must be out of the building by 4 p.m. So at the end of the day when the bell rings, all right, you need to be making your way out of the building. The only exception that rules if you're with a teacher or you're with some type of coach. All right, so at 4 o'clock, guys, make sure you're heading to the house. Go ahead and make your way out of the building. No PDA, all right, so no public displays of affection. Guys, if you're called on campus making out or doing things you shouldn't be doing, any type of inappropriate activity when it comes to that type of thing, you will be coming to one of the administrators and we will be contacting your parent and letting your parent know what you've done. All right? So make sure you don't want to have that awkward conversation with your mom or dad. All right? And I promise you, if you do it, we're going to have an awkward conversation with your parents. So make sure y'all guys keep your hands to yourself and do your own thing on your own time but not here at school. Every student at Dutch Fork High School has the right to feel safe uh, and, and not be harassed in any way. Uh, please, if, if you have been the victim of sexual harassment or you see someone who is a victim of sexual harassment, and that can be verbal, it can be physical, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of harassment, please, please report it to either a teacher, a, um, a school counselor, or an administrator immediately. Don't let that go on. Um, the same rules apply for bullying. Um, don't harass any students verbally at all. Um, this also applies to cyberbullying, um, social media, all types of social media, email, um, even though it's not happening on campus, if it becomes um, a distraction on campus or if someone is getting a hard time because of something that was posted online, uh, those consequences can then apply uh, as school consequences as well. So um, absolutely none of that. Um, so, so no harassment of any type. We are now open to cell phones outside the classroom. Um, so that means in the hallways, before and after school, at lunch, all of those times, you are welcome to use your cell phones. Um, in the classroom, however, we are still um, saying no cell phones uh, unless you've been given explicit permission by that teacher to use for some sort of educational purpose. Um, so cell phones are not allowed. Please make sure they are off while you're in the classroom. But outside the classroom, you may use them. Um, now that being said, you do need to use proper cell phone etiquette. Um, please make sure you're not speaking loudly on your phones and disturbing others in the hallways. Um, you can't have earbuds in. 
uh, in both ears walking down the hallway. We have to be able to communicate with you. Um, and so you've got to be able to listen and respond while you're in the hallways. Um, and then, uh, you know, don't walk and text. You know, if you're looking down and you're texting and you're not paying attention to where you're going, uh, that can cause you to bump into people and, and then lead to other types of problems. So we don't want to have that going on either. There are a couple things that you do need to remember about your iPads. Uh, number one, they need to be in a case and your name should be on the outside of that case. If it's not in the case, um, you'll be issued an MBI. Um, so please make sure it has a case if it doesn't already. Uh, there is no gaming or messaging, uh, particularly in class, on those iPads. These are school-issued devices that are meant for instructional purposes, so make sure that you are not gaming or messaging, particularly in class. Uh, those will also result in MBIs as well. Um, please make sure that you have uh, your name uh, and photo on the lock screen of your iPad. Um, so, you know, you could take a picture of your ID and, and post that as your lock screen so that if you did misplace your iPad, someone can just push the home button and we can figure out whose it is and get it back to you uh, quickly. So please make sure that you do that. Um, if you do find a lost iPad, um, and let's say you don't know the person or you, you um, there is no picture or name on the lock screen, uh, please make sure you turn that into the front office immediately so we can get it back to that person. Um, if you lose your iPad, Make sure you report that immediately um, and then also log into iCloud.com and try to do a Find My iPad to see if you can locate it. Um, if, however, you think or know it has been stolen, uh, you do need to file a police report with that uh, with the SROs and um, you, know, you can contact the administration and we can help you with that as well. Um, so let's utilize those iPads the way that they're supposed to be used when you go into classrooms. Check the stoplight so that you know what the expectations are for uh, the classroom that day. Um, and then uh, we'll be able to have a great year with our iPads. And now for some announcements. Guitar Club has its first meeting next Wednesday in room 340. If you're interested in Beta Club, there will be a meeting on September 3rd at 4 o'clock in the senior cafeteria. If you haven't received your iPad yet, turn in your yellow and green forms and bring $40 to the bookkeeper. Makeup iPad distribution will happen each week. Make sure to move your car off the band grid by 345 every day. Otherwise, you may lose your parking pass. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. That's slow you sound depressed. This one goes this way. This week. This week. Oh. Tell me what we're going to say when we take a look at the replay. Wait, I was laughing. Sorry. Expectations. Oh my god. <laughs> Looking at you like this. Really fun. <laughs> yeah. Fresh meat. <laughs>